Hey everybody, this is Tony and I'm here today with a special guest, none other than a dynamic vocalist and singer, Miss Beth. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. That's right. That's right. All of that. <laughs> oh man, but I'm doing good. I'm glad to see you. You're looking good. Thanks. Um, I want to talk about some music, of course, today. Okay. Um, but how have you been during the midst of the pandemic? I've been asking everybody this. How have you uh, fared through this? Um, I've, I've been doing well. Um, you know, I think everybody in the very beginning, everybody's just like, what is going on? What's happening? What are we doing? Do I have enough toilet paper? You know, it was all <laughs> like And then it was kind of like, okay, this is what this is. Where is this going? And you just kind of, um, uh, you just, just kind of deal with it. Yeah, yeah. But I've been doing good. I've been able to work and continue to um, record and put out new music. So I, I'm good. Okay. I'm glad to yeah. hear that. Uh, especially, you know, I, I love to just hear people say, you know, they've been working or, you know, doing something good because especially all the bad stuff that we heard and, and, and negative things that we heard uh, over the last almost two years now. Yes. Uh, so I, I get excited when I hear this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, the whole thing has just been kind of like navigating and deciding what makes sense to do, what to do, not to do. And you want to watch the news, but you don't want to watch it too much. Right. And then, but you want to be aware, you know what I'm saying? And then you still want your life to go on. And I think as musicians and as artists as, and as we create, as creatives, we've had to kind of um, figure out what to do. And as me being a singer and, and putting out music, I just decided to continue doing what I do, and, but just make my environment as safe as possible. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I want to talk about some music. I know you got your new single, Got Next. Uh, yeah. Out. I yes. love this thing. I was listening to it just now and earlier. Uh, I love the the funky mm -hmm. groove it got to it. Uh, I just I loved it. And then uh, the the Roger Troutman like you know vibe yeah. on it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. I, I had a lot of fun recording that. Um, I had a lot of fun working with Swifty McVay. You know he's from Legendary Group D12, and it was yes. fun. And we've just kind of built our relationship. You know, um, uh, working together and be, have become you know. Um, better acquaintances and, and friends and 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 I love that and my producer Marcus Devine did a great job on the on the record. It was fun and it was a different record for me because my first album is is so adult contemporary laid back chilled smooth and then I'm doing got next which has a harder edge to it. But I just want to do something different, do something out the box. That I was just feeling a little rough. You know, we come out this pandemic. <laughs> I'm like, you know, come on, let me give a little 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 something. So it was just different, but it was fun for me to step out the box and do something different. Yeah, yeah. What did the concept for the song come from? Because I, I did like that. Uh, lyrics are always important to me personally, uh, especially mm -hmm. in, in music and in R&B music uh, more specifically. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But you saying they may be up right now, but somehow I got next, I, which I like. Yeah. Because it's, a, it's a mantra. It is. And, it, and you can, it could be something to be encouraging to people. I think a lot of people are, are going through something right now. If, if it wasn't pandemic induced, Mm -hmm. then it's just you trying to find your way and figure out what you want to do in your life. And a lot of times you feel like you're passed over or you're, you, you're ready for what's next, but what's next is not necessarily ready for you. So That's this right. song was, you know, one of those things where it was encouraging and self-motivating to tell people just don't quit and keep doing what you're doing and that you will have next. We don't know when, but you're right. going to you gonna get your time. So just keep going, you know. Yeah, absolutely. But it, it is encouraging, though, um, because we all feel that way at some point or another, I would assume. I know I definitely have. So yeah. it, it, it's something that's real life, you know, yeah. which I which yeah. I love. Every day, all day. Yeah, I love that. So are you working on a, a new full length project now that you put the single out as well? Uh, actually, my second album is fully completed and we oh, just okay. haven't decided when we're going to release it yet. So the next album is um, 12 songs and Got okay. Next will be on that album. I'm really excited about that. And it'll probably be released in 2022. Um, we're entering or we're, we're, we're approaching the last quarter of the year. Yes. And so what um, we've decided to do was just I'm going to release a Christmas single and a video for that. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to release a children's book. So those are the things that I'm going to be working on towards the latter part of the year. Then the album could come out next year. 
Okay, okay. Is the okay. album uh, going to be a mix up of uh, sounds too? Are you just trying new things on the album period or is it going to be uh, something uh, specific? I think the new album is going to be a combination of what you heard on my first album, Free, and then uh, some new sounds for me. Yeah. And I love trying new things. You know, some people are like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Or this is my <laughs> style, this is my style, this is me, this is what I do. And I, I have that on the album as well. But then I also have like, you know what? Take me out the box. Give me something different. Let's do something fun. Let's do something sexy. Let's do something funky. Uh -huh. So I have a combination of all those things. And I'm a melting pot of, of music and music that I grew up listening to. I grew up listening to Brandy, Monica, Mariah, Tony Braxton. So you'll hear all of that, you know, Janet, Beyonce. You'll hear yeah. all of that on my album. And those are the women that I love and I love listening to. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, Beth, I heard that one of your favorite singers is one of my favorite singers. Who is that? Is, uh, Whitney Houston. Oh, that is my ultimate thing. Yeah. There's, there's, you know, there's nothing. Yeah. 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 I love Whitney. I'm wearing her shirt today. Matter of fact, I don't know if you can see it, but and yeah. You know, oh, oh, and that's that first album. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. And you know, listen to how I'm saying this. You know, we have a birthday coming up. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we have a birthday coming up. Yeah, she's I my, she's it. my, and I, when I mentioned the other singers, I didn't even mention her, but she is bar none my favorite. Yes. So, yeah. What, what yeah. made you fall in love with Whitney? Um, I think being able to identify with this tall, thin, brown girl singing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see that, you know, wearing her natural hair, um, just standing there being statuesque and, and growing up in school, I was that tall, skinny, brown girl looking like that, that yeah. wanted to sing. And I was able to relate with her look. And when they started interviewing her, just talking to her and listening to her, I could relate to it. And later I found out, I'm like, well, I know why I can relate to it. Like we like, like, you know, the same birthday is very, a lot of similarities. And then when I got a chance to later in life meet her, it was just full circle. It, we just laughed because we, we were a lot alike from the short amount of time I got a chance to talk to her and, and whatever, because she filmed Sparkle here. Right, and it, right. And so I was her stand-in and her body double in the movie. So I got a chance to connect with her and it was very brief, but it was life-changing for me, so. Yeah, I can yeah. only imagine. Oh. I, I never got to meet her, but oh. I, I, if I got to meet her, I probably would have jumped off somebody's roof at that point, so. Let me tell you, <laughs> it was about like that for me because when I did meet her, I remember we, it was the last day of filming and I had my cell phone and I'm sitting there shaking. I'm like, can somebody go take a picture? You know, and I get over there and I take this picture with her and um, which I post every year on my birthday or our birthdays, I should That's say. That's right. So That's I post right. it every year. And after, I remember after taking the photo, I went in the bathroom and I was crying uncontrollably, you know, mm. and I was just like, hey, what you need to get it together. But to me, she was everything. She was the artist that I had seen as a little girl. She was who I, you know, put her record on and tried to sing like she mm -hmm. was, she was who I wanted to look like. And so to actually have that come full circle and you meet that person, you touch that person, <clears throat> you talk to that person, you take the picture, it was overwhelming. So you yeah. saying jump. I would if it I probably would have. You know, I, <laughs> I relate when you say I was just freaking out. And I, I remember this girl was there. She was one of the people that worked on a movie set. And she was like, what's wrong with you? You act like you never met a celebrity before. I said, she is it for me. That's my person. So you don't, you don't even get this. That's like, right. it was, you know, so it was something special for me. And I, I had to really, you know, get myself together. Cause I'm like, okay, I can't let nobody see me smiling like I'm six and I just got a whooping or something, but I was <laughs> crying. Like, no, seriously, I was bawling because it was just overwhelming. She has somebody who I'd looked up to for so long. She was yeah. standing there in the flesh and I was freaking out. Yeah. So yeah, what you yeah. said, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I was done. I was just like, y'all throw me away. I ain't good for nothing else now. You know? Right, right. Yeah. But she really was something special and I don't think people understood that. You know, mm -hmm. I like I said, I never met her, but I already, I could just tell, you know, just listening to a record, just looking at a video, she was really something special. And I don't and think it came through the TV, it came through the screen. Right, right. But sometimes we don't get that, like in the moment, we don't realize that, you know, 
I always saw that, but a lot of people in the world didn't necessarily see that, you know? So I always loved Whitney and Whitney had a voice like nobody else. And she could sing anything, like every singer can't sing everything. <laughs> Everybody can't sing a Anita Baker song. So, you know what I'm saying? But she could really sing anything. And that was the beauty of it. And I'm like, this woman is, is not even human at this point. And I don't nah. believe she was, honestly. She nah. had to just be somebody God sat down. She was an angel because he sent her and snatched her right back. That's right. That's right. So there it is. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. But um, speaking of your rich background in our history, uh, so if people don't know, I want to go back, you know, back a little bit over what you've done previously. So you've done background vocals uh, for numerous artists. Uh, a lot of my favorite artists, including the okay. music maker, yeah, um, and Kim as well, and yes. uh, uh, a bunch of people. Matter of fact, how did you, you know, end up going from uh, being a background vocalist to the forefront, and how was that different for you? You know, I laugh sometimes because I say I'm still figuring that process out. You know, all <laughs> I ever wanted to do was do background, and I started out doing background first. Um, because of me having extreme stage fright and me feeling like, like and knowing I wanted to be on stage and perform, but I didn't want the pressure of being the only person up there, you know, this, the lead singer. So right. I was like, you know what, if I become a background singer, I still get to dress up, I still get the lights, it's all that, but I don't have all the <laughs> pressure that they have. Right. And so that was my initial thing. But um, Michael Powell, if you know anything about the history of Anita Baker and how she started with the band called Chapter 8, mm -hmm. um, and, and Michael Powell was her producer, and he was the um, person that um, discovered her and, um, and put her out. Um, he's a friend of mine, and he mentored me and coached me and was like, you know, I think you need to be a solo artist. And I'm like, Mike, I'm not, you know, that is... <laughs> and he was like no I really think you should and you'll eventually do that and and the crazy thing is Anita told me that she felt that I was gonna be a solo artist one day and I was just like you know I'm gonna be your background singer forever and I'm not gonna ever do this and so you know if you look at my social media handles Beth always sings and um that's the name Anita actually gave me. Um, mm. We were joking around one day, and I, I don't remember, was I singing or whatever happened? And she says, yeah, Beth always sings. And I'm like, you know what, that got a ring to it. So that <laughs> became my, um, it first became an email address for me, and then um, it turned into my social media handles, you know. Okay. And so, um, you know, it, it just was one of those things where I just kind of migrated into it with the coaching, you know, the advice of, of some great people that I felt like if they felt that I had something, let me pursue it. And Mike really worked with me and pushed me and actually took me in the studio to record um, one of the songs Anita did, I Just Wanna Be Your Girl. Okay. It's a song that Chapter 8 did um, and she sang it and he actually wrote it and recorded it. So when he had me do that song, he was like, yeah, I think you need to go. And I'm just like, no, you know, but he's like, yeah. So it just <laughs> kind of evolved and, and I like it actually. Okay. It's yeah. a lot of work. It's a lot of pressure, but I like it. But my first love, I would say, is background. Yeah. And I, I believe still, it. you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I want to, um, I like talking about that kind of stuff, uh, specifically like background singing. Uh -huh. um, I talked to Tawatha AG, you know, from Entume uh, a while ago, right? And she basically said to me uh, during the course of our talking in the interview that she considered herself a background vocalist. And I said, even still with you having, you know, an album of your own and you singing lead on one of the biggest songs for Into Me and all this mm -hmm. stuff. And she said, yeah. So I don't know, <laughs> which I, I don't mind, you know what I'm saying? Cause I, I love being, I would love to be in the background too, but do you consider yourself a background vocalist or do you just consider yourself a vocalist period? I, 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 you know what, that's a good question. Uh, Cause I want to say yes, and then yes, <laughs> because the, there's it's, it's often been said among um, amongst background singers, there are those that can sing background and lead. That's right. And then there are those that can only sing background. Yeah. And there are those that can only sing lead, and they mm -hmm. can't sing background. I can do both, so I would say that I'm a vocalist because I can do both. Both. Um, but I would say maybe, but I love background though. Because there's yeah. something warm and, and cozy and comforting about 
good background vocals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can make or break a song. That's right. That's right. If your background is, is on, the lead singer ain't really got to work that hard. That's right. If your background are terrible, you to toe up the song. <laughs> The background singer gotta sing and fix it. Like it's just, it's just this thing. So background is 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 like that. You have this song, and then the background is just this warm blanket that you just put over it, and 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 the frosting and the cherry on top and the sprinkles and you know. So <laughs> I, I think I think I'm a vocal. I would say vocalist that has the first love of background. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, no. That was a hard question. <laughs> It's all right. It's all right. You, you know, you ain't got to choose. But I just, I was curious to know because I know that some people feel that way, you know, even like, for instance, with groups, like you have people that sing lead, like, uh, for instance, like SWV, right? Yeah. So everybody knows Coco is the lead singer, but you have people that would consider Lily and Todd background vocalists and they might consider themselves something different. So, you know, because you did sing lead on some of the songs, you, you are a singer. So, I'm just, I was just curious to know uh, yeah. how how it fared out for you. But you're right about that. Background vocals are important on a record. And I was just saying that the other day. Um, real background vocals, especially, was very important to a record, especially back in the day. That's why you had people like Luther who were so meticulous about the way they did things because yeah. it made your song. Yeah. Especially when that harmony was there, when it was right. It, that was it. That's all you needed. And we knew. <laughs> Every part we knew when the background was coming in, we knew they cut offs, we knew their starts, you know, that's their right, progress, everything. And so, a back, yeah, background is everything. Yeah. yeah, I love the background because people don't understand that the background, though, might, might not get all the shine, but is a lot of the, the, the pull for what you're hearing, you know what I'm saying? Because if one of those background people are off, it, it throws the lead singer off a lot of times, too. Off and I and you know and I love the opportunities when I'm able to sing lead and background in the show, which I, I you know do with Kim, yeah. and then um, I have a show coming up um, with Najee, okay, and he's and I'm gonna do background for him and Melissa Morgan, and then I'm gonna come out and lead a song with Najee. So that's cool when I can do both, and then the same night is really cool because you get to show your versatility, and then that night I'm a vocalist. Right. Because it's you, you know, so that's all. <laughs> but you've been blessed, seriously, uh, with your voice. You have a strong voice, and I love that. Uh, you. You've been you've been blessed because, like you said, not everybody can do the background and the lead. And I think sometimes some get confused on that. But <laughs> I, will, I will not name names, but I know some folk. And they be like, I'll do your background. I'll be like, mm. right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I know, listen, I, I, you have to learn how to just be honest with yourself, though, because I know for me, like, I could probably, you know, I could tear some background up, but I can't go and sing a lead song, a whole song, and be all right. right I right, just right. can't. Like, I have to work on it. It'll go, it's going to take a lot of little pull in the back. It's go, You know what I'm saying? It's going to take some work. <laughs> <laughs> I got to work on it. I got to get my mind together. Yeah, yeah. But see, if I got two other people back here with me, you tell me, hold down this part, I got you. Like, that's it. Right, right. Right, right, we, right. we we rocking and we rolling. I promise. Right, right, right. <laughs> I get. It. But you just gotta know your place. You know what I'm saying? Everybody don't know that. You gotta know what fits your voice too. Every song don't fit your voice. You no. Can't, you can't go and sing, uh, you know, uh, Barry White, and your voice is meant to sing, you know, soprano. Like you can't do that. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. But everybody, you know, everybody. As my grandma say, everybody ain't a. That's right. <laughs> And it is what it is. <laughs> That's right. They don't, and then you don't understand. You got to work out an arrangement for your voice that fits that song. Y'all want to go and sing in the original key, and this is not your. That's not your key. Come back. Every, every Come key back. ain't for everybody. That's right. Come back, please. Come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, oh man. It. But yeah, it's it's crazy. But I love I love uh, background vocalists. Period. Because they yeah. are, you know, the cream of the crop when it comes to a record. Yeah. Now you got people who really switch to doing their own background and stacking vocals and all that kind of stuff. But before yeah. you had people that you would call on, like, I know this person can do it. I know that person can do it. This is the premier And the texture, textures of the voices added something different. You know, um, I, I tend to do a lot of my own backgrounds because I'm a background singer too. 
Right. But there are some um, songs that I actually have on my album, the new album coming up, that I have brought in some other people to sing background. And I love the contrast and the texture of their vocals on that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It just makes it all the more better. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? I feel like, personally, uh, mm-hmm. if you have a good singer, a singer who knows what they're doing, and a right. singer who knows their part, it'll yeah. flow. Oh, That's yeah. It. It's great. It. But I want to talk about your uh, some more of your history, though. So, uh, you know, of course, your father was one of the uh, Funk Brothers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, which is amazing and, and just crazy. Uh, because, uh, you know, for people who might have been under a rock, the Funk Brothers, of course, played on a lot of the Motown record stuff um, and uh, pretty much made them hits because those those beats and those instruments made those songs the hits. The simple lyrics that yeah. Holland Doja Holland was writing or Smokey or Norman Whitfield was writing added to that, don't get me wrong, but those beats really made it come together. Yeah. Yes. So how did you, you know, grow up uh, in an environment like that, what was that like? You know, uh, I'm sure he probably brought home stuff all the time. Um, um, it, it, so here's here's the thing. I didn't really grow up in that environment. Oh, so okay. when, by the time I was born, um, Motown was gone to LA. Okay. They weren't here. So um, I, you know, found out my father was in the Funk Brothers later in life, actually, because Mm. what happened was, you know, he did the Motown thing, he did the Funk Brothers thing, Motown moved to LA, and then I was born after that. So then I hear the stories of, oh, your daddy worked for Motown. I'm like, okay. (laughs) I didn't know what that was as a little kid. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know, but I knew that my father was a musician and I knew that he played, Um, you know, the piano in our home some of the funk brothers would come over and some of the ones that were still here very mm-hmm. you know a few of them were here um and they were my uncle so-and-so uncle so-and-so but again i didn't i didn't know you know what yeah. i'm saying so as i got older and i kept hearing oh you know that's johnny you know he worked for motown and i'm like oh you know, i didn't okay. you know what I'm saying? it didn't mean and, and then and i think in later years my father still played around here he did shows he did concerts with different people and my father um ended up um working in it for the Detroit public school system, um, mm. playing um, music, uh, um, being a piano accompanist uh, at, in, in school. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm thinking my daddy works at school. Like, you know, there were things that I didn't know until I got older when I really actually knew what my dad did for Motown and the contribution that he had with him and those other amazing musicians. Um, I was good and grown. Right. <laughs> Seriously. And sometimes I think about it, I'm like, how did I not know this? But what if one of the things is, is that my father did not want me in the business. So he really just kind of sheltered that thing from me. Oh, and okay. I was into the music that I listened to, which was the current music of that time. Right. I wasn't listening to Motown because to me, I was a kid. I was the old music. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, yep. you know, so and I have such a, a different love and appreciation for it now. So in my household, there was music playing all the time. My father was always on the piano, but in terms of me getting schooled and the history of Motown and all that stuff, no, it was none of that in my house. Mm -hmm. And and, and really when I found out what my dad did, you know, they worked on this movie called Standing in the Shadows of Motown. And they filmed that. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, it was an excellent movie. And they filmed that movie over years because they did it independently. They didn't have money. And I remember as a kid, they were working on that movie. And my dad would tell me, oh, I'm going to be in a movie. And I'd be like, you ain't going to. <laughs> like, what are you, about? you know, it's mommy. Like, then I'm like, oh my God, my daddy was dreaming. Like, I seriously thought he was joking. When the movie was completed, my father passed away, like during the premiere of wow. the movie. And the day that it was the day before it was supposed to be premiered in Detroit, my father literally, because he didn't even live here anymore, came here and he passed away at the hospital. Um, it's just, just a crazy story. Um wow. they were having the premiere. Um, the night before the premiere, I talked to him on the telephone. The next day was the premiere, and mm-hmm. he died that morning in the hospital. They had to rush him to the hospital. It was crazy. And so I was I was excited because I was going to be able to see this premiere for this movie that my father had been talking about that I kept saying, my daddy ain't going to be in no movie. I don't know. What are you talking about? <laughs> right. And then the movie comes out. They win Grammys for the movie and the music. And, everything. and I'm like, oh, my God. But he's gone. He wasn't able to, to you know, but he made it 
he made it to where he was supposed to make it to. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, but it was just one of those things where I learned so much more about my father after he was gone. You know, he didn't want me in the business. He didn't want me to be starry eyed like I am. He didn't want all that, you know. And then here it is. I'm naturally doing it, and I'm honored to do it and to carry on his legacy. You know. Yeah, so. yeah. It's important that you do. Um, but I'm glad that you are. Uh, I, I know he probably didn't want you to, but I can understand the reason why, yes. uh, oh, I- especially the things that they went through back then. Oh, yeah. um, because we always see like the glamour of stuff and, you know, people just like gloss it over with a paintbrush. Um, but you don't see all the times that th- they played on records and didn't get paid or didn't get what they were supposed to get. And that kind of leaves you with a bitter taste sometimes with that kind of stuff. So I can understand, you know. Yes. But um, I'm glad that the movie was put out because it's important to highlight those kind of people um, that really made those records pop, you know? Yes. Uh, including people like the Andantes that was like a, a premier background vocalist on a lot yes. of records. And people don't know that. But these people are who you're listening to that you're saying, oh, this is such and such in the Marvelettes. No, that's not them all the time. <laughs> Or this is Mary and, and Florence in the Supreme. No, that's not them all the time. A lot of times it was these women who sang on these records, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I'm grateful for the Motown family um, that is still here. You yeah. know, they have taken me under their wing. They're my aunties and uncles now. Yeah. And I love them. So, you know, you're speaking of the Andantes, you know, um, those are my aunties. Got their phone numbers. Call them. You know, they'll, or they'll, they'll hit me up on Facebook. Um, there is an organization called the HAL organization, which stands for Heroes and Legends. They're in right. Los Angeles, California. And I perform with that organization every year. Um, and that is the Motown, what they call the first five. They kind of got together and started this organization. Um, the first five were like the first five people at Motown. Yeah. So Janie Bradford is one of the first five. And she's like the co-writer of Money. Um, she right. wrote that with Barry Gordy. Uh, that's my auntie Janie, you know, yeah. and I'll be in LA every year performing at her event. And she has it at the Beverly Hills hotel It's star studded. It's incredible. The Motown alumni is there. And, um, I'm just grateful that they've embraced me and taken me under their wing and in their family, um, knowing that my father was one of them. And, um, they've really done a lot of things to help me. And I'm so grateful just to, to be, you know, a, a part of the Motown family. So, yeah. 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 Motown was definitely something special. Um, and I, I say that all the time. Uh, yes. I had Mary Wilson on last year before she passed. Oh, yes. And uh, we, we, you know, we talked about that kind of stuff. And, and matter of fact, uh, speaking of that, um, I had Frida Payne on a few months ago. And, and yes, uh, yes. Uh, the Funk Brothers played on her song, Band of Gold. Those are my aunties. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Claudette Robinson, that my auntie Claudette. That's right. Know, that's right. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's amazing, though. I'm glad that they, you know, still took you in. and. Oh, me too. You I'm know. grateful. Grateful. Yeah. It's amazing. But when you listen to that stuff now, what, what do you feel uh, or do you think about now when you go and listen to that stuff now? I think about how strong they were. Yeah. Because not only did they have to sing and perform? It was the time that they had to do it. Right. We're, we don't have, we have other issues that we deal with in this time, but they were dealing with just being accepted, being black, you know, or being only accepted for your music, but you can't go nowhere else and do anything else. Whereas Mm -hmm. we can walk in a place now and do whatever, you know? That's right. their their thing it was just a different situation with them and I'm so um I, I I'm just grateful that they're here to tell me stories tell me things to encourage me um if I ever have any questions um about how I should handle something they have great knowledge and advice you know they just come from this such this different they were so strong yeah they were so strong. you know yeah. can you imagine being able to perform but you can't use the restroom in that building or you mm-hmm. can't eat in that building. But after you perform, everybody's giving you a standing ovation. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you're not good enough for, you know, for basic necessities in life. I don't know how they did it. And when I think about it, I'm like, you guys are so resilient and strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
But you know what? It is too because not because they wanted to do it, but because you have to do it. And, and when you're forced to do something, you learn how to adapt. You know what I'm saying? That's just us as human, especially black people. We we know how to adapt to something, you know? So you have to learn how to roll, you know, with that stuff. Not necessarily meaning that you like it, but it just right. means that, hey, I got to go through this right now that's to get where I'm he, going. Yeah. So I, I think that's what it comes down to a lot of times because yeah. regardless of that, we still got uh, countless hit records and, and oh, a bunch of stuff right now today that people still go and see in the museum and all that wonderful, you know, history and, and legacy that that's still there right. uh, on top of that being a black owned company and you having all these black owned people that just in the neighborhood singing yeah yes so it, it really is it really is something to you know respect and, and marvel at like yes. somebody really did this <laughs> started from the ground and and built an empire it's incredible yeah all those records uh are still so very prevalent today though yeah. uh they still sample those that stuff and like I said, the, the beats itself with your father and, and all those other guys playing on it is, what can you say? Like, <laughs> there's, not, there's nothing to say. Them guys were scrolling down, you know? And yeah. It was just, and they just, they naturally played and they loved what they did. And you felt the passion in it when they played. It was, it was great. Yeah. You can tell that it was actual family environment when things were going on just mm -hmm. by the sound of things. Mm -hmm. um, because you can hear organicness, you know what I'm saying? Oh. You can hear that kind of stuff uh, when it comes together. But yeah, I, I'm glad that you're carrying on his legacy. I, I love that. Um, but you also participated on The Voice. I want to talk about I that did. a little bit. A few I years did. ago, uh, season 16, I think it was? Yeah, so that was um, 2019. So it's actually two years um, now. Um, uh -huh. And um, time sure does fly. Uh, right. <laughs> that was that was an uh, uh, amazing experience. Something um, I I never thought I'd do. Something I said I would never do, and I ended up doing it. And I'm so glad that I did. And I'm I'm grateful for the experience. I'm grateful for the opportunity. Um, it was life changing for me. And um, you know, I, I have no regrets. I, I would definitely do it again. It was it was it was hard though. Yeah. It was very hard. The schedule, the the timing, the rehearsals, the the you don't get a lot of sleep because it's a lot of work, you know. And and a television show moves very fast, and that's right. Of, they need from you, and they require you to be able to keep up. It was great, though. It it was great for just teaching me how to be a better artist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How was the experience? You would say, as far as you know, dealing with having the cameras and the audiences and all this kind of stuff, especially, you know, coming from you having stage fright long ago. Uh, was that something you had to adapt to? Um, by the time I got on the show, I was okay performing in front of people. So, you know, with the timeline, with me having the really bad stage fright, that was in the beginning. And I kind of got over that by the time I released my first album in 2017. Okay. So I was used to performing live by that time. So I was okay. Um, there, and, and when you're doing television, it's, it's a little different because it looks like a huge audience on television, but it's really <laughs> not that many people. And you more so have cameras in your face. So I was okay with that. You know, okay. I was okay. Once you, you, you scope the room and you say, okay, it's camera here. Where am I supposed to look? What do I, you know, and then right. they take all of that then you're okay. It, it was really okay. It was a great experience. It just, it made me, um, it just made me stronger. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so things that I do when I come back home and I may do television here or I do a performance here, it's so not the same pressure and stress as a television show. So it's a little bit easier. So it was cool. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, the thing about it is with those shows, too, a lot of things are really structured because they have a direction that they need to go in already. So yeah, it kind of puts you in a place to just be like, OK, I got to roll with what's going on. Cause yeah. what, tell me what to say. Right. Tell me, <laughs> tell me what to say. <laughs> it's, like, yeah, it's basically like that. Yeah. Yeah. But you did an awesome job on your uh, cover. You. Nina uh, Simone, uh, I put a spell on you. Thank you. I, I just love it. Um, your voice period is really a uh, sultry sound, uh, oh, which is, is, and it's strong. It's not like, uh, I hate to call people's names, so I won't, <laughs> but 
you know, it, it's 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 a strong, t- very uh, clear voice, uh, and that's what I love. Especially people saying R and B music, you can feel when you go into an emotion on a song, and that's what I like. So you did an awesome job on that. Thank you. <laughs> you did an awesome job on that. Thank so, you. Would you participate in another show like that if you had the opportunity to? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, because what I know now, you know, I went into it not knowing, but having an idea of what it could be. Mm-hmm. So yes, I, if, if anything else were to be presented to me, I definitely would do it. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Well, Beth, what can people expect from you next? Let everybody know what they can expect from you coming up. Um, well, this year, I'm going to be releasing a single for Christmas. Okay. It's not titled yet. <laughs> well, it kind of is. It kind of is. It kind of is. Um, but I don't know if I want to say it yet. I mean, it's no big deal. I just want to make sure I get the title right. I don't want to go saying stuff. So, but anyway, I have a Christmas single, and there will be a video to accompany. Okay. And then there is a book, a children's book that will be coming out. And there will be um, um, some just rest for the rest of the year, you know, um, after we talk about that. You know, the one of the things I wanted to do is I love the holiday season. One thing I, I've always wanted to do is do a Christmas album. And I I wasn't able to um, get the album done. So it seems like I'm just doing singles and that that's fine. Okay. Um, and, and to tackle the book, you know, literacy is a big thing. And yes. when you look at the statistics in our state of Michigan for illiteracy, the numbers is, is frightening. There, there are people that are functioning illiterate. Yeah. And I really didn't know that until I really started looking into it. And I just wanted to do a book to talk that that's an easy read, mm-hmm. a, re, a, a book to encourage young people, to encourage acceptance, okay. to encourage... Um, not bullying, mm-hmm. you know, and to encourage being beautiful and, and, and feeling beautiful. So um, the name of the book is called I'm Beautiful Inside and Out. Okay. So I love the story. It's a very simple story. Um, it's, it, you know, it's a very colorful book. And I'm really excited about that. And I'm proud of that. So, you know, that's one thing, you know, the music thing I can do. I'm stepping outside of my box with the book. And so I'm really excited about that for this year. Absolutely. Absolutely. So do we have a release date on the book yet? Or are you still working on it? It'll be October. Okay. Okay. It'll Sounds good. The and then of course the single got next. So um, that's out now, right? Yep. My single got next is out now featuring Swifty McVeigh and that's out. And then that will also be on the album that will come out t- uh, tomorrow. It'll come out in 2022. <laughs> It's coming out tomorrow. No, Look, that's all right. <laughs> right. I'm just like, yeah, 2022, the album, full album will be out. And I'm excited about this album. I'm excited about just the new sounds and me just kind of stretching a little bit more. So Right, right. It's always uh, better when you push yourself uh, to create new things and, and hear uh-huh. new things and, you know, get a feel for different stuff. Because I think we, sometimes we get comfortable in what we're, we know, you know. Right. So. When you start getting something new and you're like, oh, um, no. okay, let's try. Right. right. <laughs> that's that's when you know you, you, you're you on the right track. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it feels good. I feel good about everything. All right. I'm glad to hear that. Um, but just let everybody know where they can find you on social media once again and your website. Okay. My website is BethAlwaysSings.com and my Instagram and Twitter is at BethAlwaysSings. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is none other than the dynamic and lovely Miss Beth. Thank you again. Thank you for having me. Thank no you. problem. No Talking problem. To you.